All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, a game like perimeter drill, a drill that uh, Kirby Smart was talking about at the Orlando Nike uh, Coach of the Year Clinic and a drill that we use uh, throughout the season as well. Make sure you check out some of our partners. Game Stride Sideline Replay Company we use at the school I'm currently at, Bishop Kenny, and the school I was previously at. I've uh, been using them for about five or six years now. Highly reliable, highly affordable, great customer service. You can call them on a game day. They've always picked up the phone anytime I've called. Make sure you check out Game Stride Dome Hats, a headwear company we use at Bishop Kenny High School. And uh, with Play Fast Football, if you want to be able to completely customize your own hat, build your own hat, go online to their hat builder. You design your own hat. You can change the style of the hat. Obviously, you can put your logo. You can put uh, embroidery on there. You can change whether it's fitted, snapback, Velcro, different uh, enclosures on the back, completely customizable. Every hat has a story. Let Dome help you tell yours. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for our coaches' gear, sideline gear, our practice gear, player spirit packs, uniforms distributed from them, everything in one location. So if you want to streamline everything with one company, make sure you check out Baker Sporting Goods. Just Play, the playbook software we use uh, for our not only our playbooks, but a lot of our team meetings, a lot of our presentations, my Patreon site, I use it. If I'm going to speak at clinics, I use it. It is the best play drawing tool on the market, and it's a unique teaching tool to quiz your players on game plans and playbooks. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, thousands of reps without needing a partner, elbows in, thumbs up, eyes, all the things you need to do to strike. You can set them up right in your weight room. And again, it is perfect for in-season, off-season. Develop the technique and the fundamentals involved in striking. You don't need a partner. Make sure you check out Difference USA. So, um, you know, by far this weekend, my favorite talk at the clinic was Kirby Smart. Um, I like the way he presents. I like his energy. I like, um, you know, a lot of the, his delivery. Just, just everything about him was excellent. And Alabama fan, so obviously Kirby was at Alabama at one part. Now he's at Georgia, which should be you know, uh, uh, becoming somebody that we have to now take care of in the world of college football, but I still like the way he presents. Uh, and the greatest thing about his talk this week was I think he kind of hit everything that, that I would want from a speaker. He talked about relevant football drills, all right? He showed good, bad, and ugly clips of them running the drills in practice. He talked about the why they do the drills. He talked through the techniques involved and, and when it was good, when it was bad, when it was ugly. He then showed game film of why they do it and said, all right, look, here it is showing up in a game. He showed game film of his opponents running what they were running and his defense handling it and saying, hey, that's exactly like it showed up in a drill. And then he showed clips of their offense running it. And, and that was just to hammer home the point, this is where football is in today's game. These are the things that you see over and over and over again. So why not do drills that show up in games, right? So a lot of the times as coaches, we may do drills that we did as players. We may do drills that other coaches have shown to us. We may do drills that we've picked up at some point or another. But I think a lot of the times what we need to look at with our drill work is, is the drill work we're doing representing or replicating game-like situations so that we're doing drills, not just to do drills, but can we replicate the scenarios in which they are showing up, and can we find a way in drill form, all right, to replicate the exact looks we need to make sure that what we're doing shows up in games, right? So it's not just drill work to do drill work, it's drill work because exactly what we're trying to accomplish shows up in games. All right, and this one happens to be a, per, uh, a perimeter drill. All right, uh, Coach Smart calls it his mod bracket drill. For us, it's just perimeter. All right, so when, when my head coach sets it up and says, hey, we're going to do perimeter today, I know exactly what we're getting into. Okay, so it's done in a half line setting, and it's done in three on three fashion. So the defense usually has some type of apex outside linebacker, a corner, and a safety. The offense has two receivers, there's a running back, and then uh, there could be somebody snapping the ball. Could be a center getting extra snaps if you had an extra center, or maybe a center that uh, might not be in full pads that, that week uh, if he's injured maybe or whatever, but it's a Tuesday, and he can snap the ball and get snaps in. And then if you're not going to use a quarterback, you can use a coach, all right, if your quarterbacks are doing other things, but somebody in that position, all right, to take that snap and then do what we need to do with the football, right? So what the drill is going to work on is it's going to work on us taking on blocks, Fitting blocks based on coverage that we're in, playing the rules 
that we are in the coverage and leverage that we are in, all right, defeating blocks, and then in getting into position to make tackles, right? So you don't have to do the drill live all the time if you're not banging that day or you got to worry about your contact hours, all right? But you can still work on getting in position to tackle. And then the thing you're really going to work on is between, I'm just going to show you two uh, coverage variations, but between those two coverage variations, how are we supposed to take blocks on? How do we trust that the way we're taking the block on is good for us, all right, the leverage that we're using? Can we defeat that block, all right? And then at some point, when can we get off that block, defeat that block, destruct that block to find the football and make a play, right? So I think most of you know we start out as a quarters toolbox team, right? So as a quarters toolbox team, a lot of the times when we get too removed, to read or palms is our adjustment, right? So when we are playing palms or to read, we are going to be inside leverage with an apex defender, all right? We're going to be about 10 or 11 by one inside the number two. We're going to be probably usually seven off, all right, the number one. The reason I say 10 or 11 is I will, I will tell my safeties based on their ability. For one safety, it's 10. For somebody else, it may be 11. One year, it's 10. One year, it's 11. There was one year we played it at 12. Um, I'm not saying that they can line up wherever they want. What I'm saying is we give a little bit of leeway based on the player, the ability, and maybe the technique that year. So there was one year everybody played at 12, right? So it's going to be 10 or 11 off the ball, not off the receiver. All right, it's going to be 10 or 11 off the ball because this receiver may be off. 10 or 11 becomes a little bit more difficult. 10 or 11 off the ball, okay? And when we're playing palms, corners outside leverage, apex is inside leverage, safety is inside leverage on two. So the first thing that we're going to do is just a simple toss play to the back. So snap to the quarterback, toss play to the back who's running the football, slot blocks the apex, wide receiver blocks the corner. Now, what are we trying to see? First thing we're trying to see is the apex physically take this block on, all right, and he's going to take it on with inside leverage, kind of like a what I would call a seven technique on a tight end, maybe some people call it a six, I don't know, but if you are inside eye of a tight end in an over front. So if you had a three technique and an inside and an end, that's fine, an inside technique on a tight end. It's a seven to me, that's just my terminology. All right, but when we take this block on, we're gonna take it on with our hat inside. And we are not going to try and run around the block. And we're not gonna try and go too fast underneath the block. We're gonna take it on physically with our helmet inside. And the reason for that is our safety is going to fit off of that block, and we want our safety to be able to play fast and aggressive, knowing where the ball is going to be sent. Okay, so the key coaching points here, we don't want to go too fast under and create a wider running lane and more space. We don't want to jump over. All right, and the first reaction of kids is they're going to try and jump over that block because that's where the ball is going. Well, if my safety is getting set to fit aggressively and fast where we think the ball is going, trusting that we're all playing the scheme, my safety is going to run there, and then you're going to jump over the top, and the ball is going to go behind you. The corner needs to take this block on with outside leverage, all right, and the ball should be funneled to our safety that's got to come off the roof as, as fast as he can once he sees that number two is being blocked inside. So we're going to be looking for how the nickel takes on the block, how the corner takes on the block, how physical are we, where's our hat placement, all right, what are we doing with our hands, how are we trying to take that block on, okay, then we're going to make sure that the ball gets sent where we want it and we all have proper leverage, so I've got inside leverage, I've got outside leverage, I'm getting ready to come off the roof, all right, and I'm getting ready to support the out. So the leverage of what we're trying to do is the first thing we're teaching. How we take blocks on and the physicality of it is the second thing. How we then destruct the block when we need to, struck, to, to de destruct, destroy, defeat, destruct the block. The key is I don't want that nickel coming off that block unless the ball showed itself all right, past me. So if the ball were to make its way through the alley and get to the point where it's even or past me, now maybe I can get off the block. If I get off this block too early, over the top with my safety run in the alley and the ball goes behind me, I'm really responsible for the cutback. If it was a tackling scenario, we would tell that first guy, hey, you got to attack the near hip. You're responsible for the cutback. Like everybody else, take their angles to run off of you. All right, and then we have a neat drill uh, that we do called a two-man vice fix-it drill where we're working on two-man vice tackles, tackling with a partner, but we'll do it with the back 
that change in directions on an angle to where if the first player that's attacking the near hip, for whatever reason, gets too far over the top, the guy behind him has to fix his leverage and now create a two-man vice on the ball, right? So here, when we're talking about that leverage, you're responsible for taking on the inside arm of this block and making sure the ball goes to the out. You're responsible for not ducking too far inside to let it go too wide or too much space, and you're responsible for not jumping over the top and let it cut back. So by taking the block on, and a lot of people are going to say, well, why would you run right into a block? Well, the way we're leveraging that play and that coverage, that's where we need to be, all right? And if we are too fast over the top or too fast under, and if we make a play, you better make that play, because if you go under and you don't make a play, now we got problems. If you jump over the top and the ball cuts back, we got problems. Anytime a guy does that and makes a play, obviously you're going to say, you know, it's like that shot in basketball. No, no, no. Oh, good shot. Right? If he makes a play, it's kind of hard to argue with somebody making a play, but you've got to explain to him and say, hey, look, I know you made the play there, but if you keep jumping over the top and my safety's getting ready to run and that ball cuts back, it's actually your fault. You're responsible for the cutback. So how we leverage each block, how we take the block on, how physical are we, what position can I get into to tackle, and when I get there, I better be in a good position. So if you're tagging off, it better be near foot, near shoulder, tag off. All right, don't be standing up tall. Don't reach with one arm. We've got to be in a good position to tackle. If it's thud, then you better be able to thud that ball carrier up. Right? So the next thing that we'll do is we'll change the leverage and we'll make it more of a quarters deal. All right? And we'll play the corner inside and we can play them off or press, depending on what we want to work on that week or what we think we're playing. We'll take the nickel and put them outside, and we'll take the safety and we'll put them inside. Okay? Same play, same run. Now what happens is... As the slot comes out to block the nickel, okay, as the slot comes out to block the nickel, what ends up happening is the nickel now has to fit and take this block on with outside leverage. I got to be physical, I got to engage, all right, if you're teaching hat and hands, I know we can't teach as much hat in the block, put your face in the fan, that mentality, we can't really use it anymore, but we want to be as physical as we can with taking that block on, all right, so I don't think we're going to hard join it, I would hard join as a force player if... As a safety, I was taking on a puller, or I was taking on maybe a bigger fullback. I would probably get in there and try and hard joint that block to force it. This is something that, as a slot block and a nickel, I'm probably going to take it on with my hands. All right, but I've got to take it on with outside leverage. All right, now the safety, when he runs, he's got to run the alley from inside out because of the leverage that the nickel has. Okay, the corner, if he's playing man, we need to make sure that he is late to the party. All right. And he needs to take this on. Now, this is the tough part when you're playing quarters. If I want to play man coverage from inside, okay, I want to play man coverage from inside, I need to make, I need to make sure in this coverage I am probably secondary contained. So the nickel should be the first contained, but I'm secondary contained. The ball can't get outside of me. So i got to be real careful of getting blocked too far inside. Even though the nickel should be sending the ball inside, you're going to look and say, hey, well, if the nickel sends it inside and I'm blocked inside, I can make the play. Okay, but if the nickel doesn't, the ultimate job of mine in quarters, I'm not the guy there to make the tackle. I'm not the guy. I'm there to make sure one doesn't catch a pass. I'm there to play all the deep routes of one. Okay, sometimes, again, we'll press it. Right? When we press it and play man, we're probably going to play it from inside leverage. So now what has to happen is my corner's got to, while he gets blocked, he's got to be able to see a block, and he might have to recreate outside leverage off that block. So from that point... I'm okay with the corner maybe taking the block on and jumping outside to create leverage so that the ball goes inside of him, inside of the nickel, back to the safety. Right? Because now what we've done is we've changed the leverage of that. When I'm in palms or two read, that corner better never be inside of that block. But if I set him up as a press player with inside leverage and he gets blocked, now a lot of times what will happen is they'll run a man player off, right? They won't block him because it's easier to run off than it is to block. But if he's getting blocked at the line of scrimmage, all right, and once he realizes that that's not a route, I'm being blocked in there. Now when I, when I take it on and I get, try to separate to get my head and, and, and see what's going on, now I might have to jump outside because I'm secondary contained. So you have to understand within each coverage, when is it okay to jump outside? When is it okay or when do I need to do that? And when should I never do that? All right, so again, with this ball here, I don't want the nickel taking this block on and diving inside unless the ball carrier had declared himself inside of my block. Because again, with this leverage, playing a true quarters technique, which we don't play a ton to two removed, 
All right, we, we will play it from time to time, and we use it in a drill a bunch because we want to teach leverage, fitting blocks, taking blocks on where the ball is trying to be sent, right? So it is a coverage we play. We play it to a tight end flanker a bunch, and we can play it to two removed, all right? But in the drill, like this past year, we didn't play it very often to, 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 to remove at all. But I still like teaching it in a drill because it's teaching leverage, taking blocks on, winning where you're supposed to win. Now my safety needs to be inside. So I can't have the nickel disappear under this block too early because if he does and my safety runs here and the ball then magically works its way there, now we could have an issue. Okay, so you're doing a perimeter drill that is physical, you're taking blocks on, you're replicating a part of the game that shows up every day. Now screen both, you could do the same drill, all right, you could do the same drill and you could possibly work different now screens, all right, so you could do the same drill, so if we were in palms, and I had, let's say, the nickel here, okay, and I had the safety here, and I had the corner here, and you started working like bubble or something like that, and you... We're trying to figure out, you could do it two ways. So we could work, and we will do this in a drill to keep everybody honest. We could throw a bubble to two, stalk one. All right, now when we do that and we throw the bubble, we want to make sure that we're getting a corner trigger outside. Safety's got to make sure that one, when two is out, my eyes and feet are to one. All right, and as soon as I start working to one, when he's got hands on, i got to run the alley. Sam now has to run the alley inside out. So the Sam is the cutback player. Don't let the ball back across your face. Get the ball running between you and the corner, which means the safety when he shows up can make that play. So we'll do that, right? Again, leverage, leverage, leverage. Maybe we'll try and throw a stand up where we get the back out. All right, so maybe we'll work on getting the back out to block. All right, so maybe we'll go two out to the corner, now screen, try to get the back to the alley to block the safety. So now when this happens and we recognize corner's got to be outside physically taking a block on, nickel's got to stay inside the back unless he beats the back to the spot and can make a tackle, okay? But if the back were to get out there, a lot of times what we might do is cheat the drill and let the back be wider or maybe push motion or something. I want the Sam to understand that if he's being blocked, he's going to stay inside of it because the safety is going to run the alley that way. It's the leverage of outside, inside a block, I run the alley. Based on the coverage, we want, we want them to understand the leverage of what they are doing. And then in this drill, what you'll always fix in, <coughs> all right, and again, what, what, what Coach Smart said was he doesn't like to do this a bunch in one setting because he knows what he's doing and why he wants the reps, but you always have to mix in some type of deal where, let's say we push him, he goes there, but he runs the wheel off the stand-up. So now we got to see, are you playing the drill or are you playing the coverage? So now when I come off, all right, two's out, I trigger, but two doesn't block me, he runs the wheel, can the corner stay on the wheel? All right, because the corner's going to be responsible for two out. Okay, corner's going to be responsible. Now, sometimes when our kids are dialed in, two went out, I go eyes and feet to one, okay, but one ran stand-up. One's not in the route, so we may get the safety and the corner over the top, which is okay. We want to make sure somebody has that route, all right? And when two comes out, if the corner triggers and two's not blocking him, we try to carry that wheel with the corner. Now, we'll also go bubble, go. So now we'll go bubble, go. And now what we need to see is the corner, when he starts to trigger down, all right, the way we do it, and, and I've changed this the last couple of years, but the way we do it now is I don't trigger unless the ball brings me down. So what I do is when two's out, I sit, and I try and hold that window as long as I can. If the ball brings me down, I've got to rally and tackle, okay? And again, your nickel would be in here. So now what I want to see is now with two out, safety's got to go, all right, eyes, feet, we got to work to one. Boom, i got to get to the top of one because one's running the vertical, all right? So... It, it would look like this if I was in, in this position playing safety, all right, if you can see this on the camera, I go twos out, eyes and feet now naturally transfer to one, one's trying to run the vertical, I got to get to where he's going, okay? Corner's going to sit in the hole, make sure that throw is tougher, maybe you can help me on the throw. If the ball is thrown down, now I'm going to rally and turn the ball back to the nickel running inside, okay? And then we will always mix in some type of... 
three-man game, right, to keep everybody honest so we can go flood, you run the outcut, you push the flat. So what we're trying to do is replicate things that we're going to see so that these guys don't just cheat the drill. Now, when we first set the drill up, 100% our intention is it's toss, bubble, now, running back swing. That's the drill. That's what's going on because we want to see how we take blocks on, how we leverage those blocks, how we fit with the safety off the top based on whether it's true quarters or two read pumps or quarters adjust with the two remove, right? That is 100% the emphasis of the drill. But to keep it honest and so that the offensive guys don't totally lose their mind, we have to mix in drop back passes. We have to mix in screen and goes. We have to mix in bubble go. We've got to do those things so that the offense doesn't think like we're just teeing off and defeating them in the drill, right? So, again, I think this is a good way to run the drill both ways because I don't think it really favors one or the other, all right? If we mix in screens, bubbles, nows, dropbacks, it's fair for the offense. The drill is three on three, so it's not like we're doing four on three stuff. We're just working three on three right now. And I think the offense has to be able to block people at the point of attack. They've got to maintain and stay on blocks. And then a ball carrier needs to understand where am I running based off those blocks, and a defender needs to figure out where am I fitting based on those blocks. All right, so an excellent drill, especially if you're a team that plays with different leverage with, with your apex. He's going to be inside times. He's going to be outside times. You can mix in some of your other coverages. So there's times where we might mix in man-to-man -man with the corner and the apex with the, nickel, with the safety plane over the top. And now when it's tossed, now how are we going to take those blocks on? If it's man-to-man -man and we're not sure of the leverage, now the safety coming off the roof has to look and go, okay, wait, where, the nickel's outside of that block, I'm going to fit in here. Nickel's inside, I'm going to fit there. The leverage in man-to-man -man stuff, when it becomes bubble screen by the, or, or swing by the back or toss, whatever it is, sometimes the man leverage isn't really as clear and precise as two read or quarters. So we don't know the, what the leverage is going to be. I'm playing man on a guy, all right, whatever it is. Let's say I'm playing off or catch, and I'm sitting here playing catch man, and he comes to block me, and it's not a vertical. He's actually blocking me now. If I'm inside of that, then I'll stay inside of it, and the safety will fit off me. But if somehow in man, whatever it was, maybe that guy took an angle, and I didn't do a good enough job keeping my leverage, and he got inside of me, and now when he's blocking me, my helmet's outside, right? Again, I don't know if that's the case. If we're pushing the back out, he's probably not going to block me out. He's going to block me in, right? But let's just say it happened. Well, when the safety comes to fit, if my helmet's outside of that and the ball's got to turn up inside of me, now the safety's got to work his fit off of that nickel play. So we change the leverage, try to make it as game-like as possible. Every once in a while, the other thing we'll probably work on from time to time is double crack because you've got to make corner support, right? So that the other thing we'll work on is, is we'll run just straight toss, just like the drill always is. But what we'll do is we'll go crack, push crack, and now what happens is stay inside of it, stay inside of it if you're being blocked, crack, replace, and you're the guy that's now got to make the play, right? So that's the other thing, <coughs> because in games it's going to show up. So we'll work that as well. So to me, great drill, good for the offense, good for the defense. There were times where we did it during the year, and it was my head coach telling me, hey, look, can you give me a look on – uh, perimeter today, change some of the leverage up. We're throwing a bunch of screens this week, now screens, or we're running a bunch of our bash theories uh, or our power read jet theories, and we got to block the perimeter. So, And we would set it up, and it was an offensive period, but it's the same theory. They've got to block people. Backs have to understand where the blocks are being leveraged. Where are the blocks winning? Where's the helmet? Cut to the butt, right? Don't run into a block. So it, it's a drill that works both sides of the ball. Today's game is going to go to the perimeter all the time, so it, it shows up. And I think Coach Smart did such a great job of not only explaining the drill, but having tremendous clips from games, all right? From the first game of the year, first play against Oregon, to the last game of the year against TCU, all right? A, a, a season-long catalog library of game clips that showed up in that fashion. And then their own offense running it to say, hey, guys, we do it too, all right? We, we, we push the ball out there too. Here's And one of the big thing, points he made up was he made his – he would make his corner safety linebackers take on – Maybe Brock Bowers and, and, and I think it's a Washington kid, maybe or number zero, whatever it is, 6'8", 270 pounds. And he talked about how, hey, this is the way we do it. Look at these two bodies that are now on your bodies. They even showed a clip of them double teaming at the point of attack of a now screen. And he said, guys, that's 500-something pounds on this little DB. He wants no part of that. So he's talking about the mentality, the mindset. It shows up in games. They do it on offense. They have to defend it on defense. So to me, great drill. Great clinic presentation. Thank you so much, Coach Smart, for that presentation because it was about ball, 
It was about techniques, it was about fundamentals, it was about coverage because you're covering, it was about coverage rules, leverage, who's outside, who's inside. It was about run fits, even though the ball's on a perimeter, that's a run play in essence, right? So it was all those things incorporated in a, in a well done presentation. And for me and, and my head coach, it was enlightening for us because it's like, hey, we, we could always do the drill better, but we do that drill. We do a version of that drill. And a lot of people, you guys out there, you probably do it too. Right? So it's just a way of showing you that game-like drills that, that, that have to show up in games, things you're doing that show up in games to go back and go, hey, kids, that's why we do it now, guys. What drill is that? Oh, coach, that's my bracket. Or, oh, coach, that's perimeter. Yeah, you're darn right it is. See how it shows up? Now when they go to do the drill again, they're like, okay, I know why we're doing this drill now. Right? So it, it's the explanation of it. The topic was great. Presentation was great. Film clips were great. And it's totally relevant, and it just confirmed to us that we're kind of on the right track. Do we do the drill anywhere near as good as Georgia? No, we don't. All right, but we try to do the drill, and when Georgia shows up doing it, now you're on the right track going, hey, you know what? That, that's pretty good. You know, we're doing the same drill that they are. Now, I realize that a lot of people are doing the same drills, even in college and the NFL and high schools and middle schools, right? That's what the game is all about. But it's how they present the drill and the slight tweaks they make the drill to the drill to make sure that it's game relevant was the best part for me. So I hope this helps you guys out. If you're doing a drill and you have a better way to do it, please let me know. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, notifications, ring that bell so you turn them on and you know every time we do a video or every time we go on YouTube live. All right, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like the content or don't like the content, leave a message. Every message that I can see, I try to interact with. I love interacting with the fans. And a lot of times, you guys give me ideas for new content or you give me ideas of how to do something better that I might have presented on the board, right? Just because I'm presenting it on the board doesn't mean I can't learn something. So leave a comment. If I see the comment, I'll get back to it. I uh, hope everybody has a great Valentine's Day out there, middle of February, right in the middle of the offseason now. It's starting to make the turn towards spring football. Hope your offseason's going great. Hope all your research and studies going great. Hopefully there's a couple more clinics out there, maybe some college visits where you're learning some ball. If you learn anything that you think is really cool, make sure to hit me up and let me know because I'm always trying to learn. All right, thanks for being a subscriber, follower, fan of Play Fast Football. Um, I wouldn't be here without you guys. These videos are all because of you guys. So you need an audience. You need somebody to talk to. Thank you for that. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast, and I will see you guys next time.